G'day and welcome to Space Engineers Survival. This is going to be the start of a series where I'm going to try to build stuff in survival in a somewhat challenging scenario in order to take out this district headquarters. Let's have a look at how we're going to set up this solar tower. But it's the start of a new world! No more mining by hand. Look at that! Look at that view! And look at that beast of a machine. Last time, I said I wanted to upgrade the Ugly Duckling. But thinking about what I did when I built this thing, and maybe a little bit of sentimentality, I've decided that instead of upgrading it, I'm going to replace it entirely, but keep it around just in case I crash, and also because I've grown attached to it, to go and mine a little bit of extra nickel and take our last well, hopefully, our last trip with the Ugly Duckling. We have a neat control panel, which is the first time I think I've ever done that. We've got our name set up. And I am pretty happy with that. Last time we got the butterball all painted up and prettied up. And now it's time to try a little experiment. Oh no! I knew I shouldn't have said something about Clang not attacking me. Oh, it's coming in really quick. Move, move, move. It's 4Ks out. All right. Let's get in behind the ambush. Come on. Yeah, there we go. I think it's going down. What I want to build onto the tick is an ability for it to do short hops or potentially even longer distance flying. Oh no! Taking hits! Evasive maneuvers. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Coming down very fast. Very hard. Very hard. Oh. Landing. Let's drive. Drive, drive, drive. I am almost out of power and I've just realized something that I did earlier. Oh man. I put the med bay upside down. Do 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 do. No red lights on. There we go. Nice. <gasps> uh oh. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> now that I've got this merge block monstrosity, let's start placing the axle. Uh oh. No! <laughs> Do a bit of recon. We've got six minutes of charge left. Not sure how adequate that'll be. Come on. Oh no, it's shooting at me. Oh, that was close. What the? Ah, there is one thing I want to do with this. Red. Looks stupid, but I wanted to do it anyway. We are going to name it. I'm going to call it Rudolph. I've got no control. Yeah. No. No. Oh! I hit something. I am very happy with how this turntable has worked out, as I, despite a little bit of practice, have not gotten any better at doing three-point turns with a semi-trailer. I've 
loaded up the Ugly Duckling with a few little goodies. And now, let's go have a look at where I think we're going to build our solar tower. Oh, 30 kilometers an hour. That I'm happy enough with. It is not quick by any stretch. Three, two, one, launch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Wow. Wow. Three, two, one, launch. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Look at that go. Oh, heck yeah! I think I got the full range! Oh, I was not expecting that! 900? Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh man, I actually made the trebuchet work properly! Oh, look at that. We are on our way. Hearing welding means I'm probably taking fire. Oh, I can't see anything through that tree. So much forest. Now let's take these turrets down. There we go. Still that one on top. All right, in we go. Gotta protect the catapult because it is doing a lot to protect everything else. Tanks contributing fire. The drifting pursuant is down. How's the catapult looking? Oh, the missile turrets are still active. This they've got missiles left. That's not good. I'm in range of them now. Okay, the catapult launch stuff. All right, I'm taking fire. Focus on the missile turrets. Come on. Yep, that one's down. Oh, I lost one of my side guns. No. Oh no, I've lost both. No. Ah, <laughs> uh, I didn't think that would survive long. Oh, jeez, no, come on, turn, turn, let's get some, ah, I can't believe how long I've withstood all this, <laughs> this thing's a lot tougher than I even gave it credit for, ah, uh, well, that's the end of the catapult, I think, <laughs> certainly did its job, I feel like it's sort of at a stalemate, but really, that base is done, I'm just unwilling to run in there blindly to try and take out the internal turrets and to take out its last spawner. And launching in three, two, one, launch. Let's fling off our nose cone and one, two, three, four, off. Okay, let's do this thing. Four, dropped. Five, dropped. I'm just gonna plow into the thing with this one. Oh, good hit! Good hit! Oh yeah! G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineers Survival. And boy, have we got a big one. There is so much to do today. So much to catch up on. So many things to finish. And I guess we should probably start by going back to where today began over at the enemy base with a nice long drive in the tick all the way back home. As much as there's a huge amount of resources in this thing, I don't think we're going to be coming back, but there are a couple of things I'm going to grab first, which is going to be the, pa the parts that I need to repair these wheels. Although it looks like I might already have, yep, I do, the necessary bits. And perhaps, oh, that's right. Perhaps the parts to repair this would be a good idea too. 
Yeah! Ah, awesome. She's fixed. Although, there's a few dings in the armor from when I got shot up. And maybe a few pieces of armor missing, but that's not too bad. Still looking mostly like the tick. Including... Bits that I probably never welded at the beginning, or that I may have welded and just for some reason never seem to stay welded. Alrighty, time for the long, long drive home. 29 kilometers. Goodbye, district headquarters. You were my foe for so long, but no more. You are done. There we go. Oh, that's right. Power. <laughs> uh, we don't have a lot. I was hoping to save a bit of time by flying most of the way, but that might be a bad idea. Uh, 14 minutes of power. 24. I mean, this is pretty power efficient. I might be able to get a decent bit of distance out of it. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. At least it'll save me a lot of time. Although I probably should have driven across this desert since it's quite easy to drive over and maybe flown over the next bit. But I thought I'd just fly up until I got onto that plateau. Rather than having to skirt the long way round. Because I think that's one of the biggest horrible bits. And then when I come down to the bit past the first base we ever destroyed, that's going to be the next bit where I need to fly. Also, I am... Oh, the sun's still relatively high. But I am aware of the fact that the sun will start to fall. And I don't want to be driving when it gets later. I'm so glad I didn't load this up with more components because it wouldn't be able to fly right now. The thrust to weight ratio of this thing is awful. Oh, but it's so much fun. Even with the clanging, it's still fun. All right, let's go in for a little bit of a landing. Or maybe not. Because apparently we're still gaining altitude. Well. Uh, <laughs> I forgot how much <laughs> you kind of have to push this thing into the ground. But we're 15k's out with 19 minutes of power left, so maybe it's not so bad. Maybe flying is the better way to go. Oh, I can see the solar axe. So, that brings me to something about today. The solar axe, I had dreams of making it this enormous... Uh, what's the word? Basically an enormous museum, really. But I think instead of that, given that I've already done too much enormous on this save that I can barely run it as it is, I'm going to make it into more of a shrine. The giant solar tower is going to be the shrine to the Ugly Duckling. It's going to be the memoriam to possibly the most important vehicle, or at least the most used vehicle, that I've had in this series. It'd be a contest between it and the goose as to which one sort of defined... Well, really the goose defined the series, to be honest, and has defined how I build things since then because I just love the fact that that rotor-mounted hitch worked. But the Ugly Duckling was so important early on, and to build something like a shrine to the goose just I, I feel that might be a bit too big it might not quite be <laughs> possible uh, so that's what I'm going to turn the solar axe building into it's going to be all about the ugly duckling it's going to have a nice little display of the actual ugly duckling which I'm going to move over there towards the end of the build and then have all sorts of cool stuff around it. I've got ideas. I've got plans. And it's going to have a beautiful view out around. Panoramic, nice, perfect views. So that's the plan. That's the plan for that bit. There's another plan for this today, though, which I will reveal later. Because this is going to be a long episode. This one's going to be sort of... I'm expecting it to be about the length of episode 100. Oh no! Bad landing! Okay. Um. Oh, okay. Uh. I think I just realized why that was a bad landing. I mean, other than the speed. 
I think I know why, and I suspect it's because I'm holding spacebar. Uh, maybe that wouldn't make a difference. But I imagine holding spacebar to kind of give myself a bit more lift as I was coming in then. Also was locking the wheels, and by locking the wheels, I end up with the wheels wanting to grab onto the ice rather than just nicely rolling along. Although, I don't know whether space engineers would model that problem. Hmm. I don't know. Looks like we're flying the rest of the way home because I'm not driving on three wheels and a wireframe. Done the wireframe thing, I'm not doing it up these hills. But I will try and slow down a lot more when it comes to getting to the base. Ah, oh, I really did pick an awesome valley to start this series in. And basically have not really ever left said valley. 30, we got 17 minutes of power left, that's plenty. 20 meters a second. Should I land on the bridge maybe? Perhaps I should. Although that could end badly if I crash again. 15 meters a second. Yeah, I think this is going to be a safe landing. Gentle as. There we go. Thrusters off. And inside we go. Oh man. I think it back to... Oh, uh, there's... So, don't be surprised if there's a huge amount of nostalgia going on today. This is probably one of the last times I will play on this map. And I have been playing on this save for... The better part of... It's what, like 18 months? It's a long, long time anyway. So I think... If I change the height offset... Yes! Ha, ah, I thought that worked. So if I change the height offset there, instead of the wheels being on the ground and us constantly hearing that wheel noise, so if you're ever running into this problem yourself, lift your wheels off the ground once you're hooked up, and just remember to drop them back down when you disconnect, so that you cannot have the horrible wheel noise even when it's connected and locked to the base. It makes such a big difference, and it's something that I'm going to be doing with all of my vehicles in the future because it just... Oh, the peace and quiet. You need the peace and quiet. So, first things first. Upstairs we go in our shiny elevator. So I can get my health back. There we go. And up to the top floor. Yay, the music's working! Woohoo! Ah, oh, that's perfect. Oh. <laughs> I would have been so disappointed if we hadn't had the music today. Perfection. I have learned so much <laughs> through this series. From how to make the mod for that music, to how to make the elevator, to how to make the elevator better, to how to build the crazy weird stuff that's down in that refinery room. I, to be honest, when I started this series, I was terrified of rotors. I was terrified of pistons. Every time I built anything with them, it exploded. And I didn't really build much with anything like that. I knew how to play the start of survival because I've always liked the beginning of survival games. So I played the start of Space Engineers over and over and over again until I basically was very confident in way a way to do things. But since that time, I've learnt how to use most blocks in the game. There are a few scripts I'd still love to learn how to use. Uh, the main one being MRMOS, which I still have to get some time to sit down and learn because I would really, really like to be able to use it properly as I would love to build a proper cool crane build. Right, there's one room left in here that's needed. I think that's the office for the boss and the link to the boss's bedroom. It's the boardroom I'm happy with. I think in here I finished everything, including lighting it. Yep. Yep, we got roofs everywhere. That's good. Okay. All the other living quarters are done. 
the gym, I believe, has a roof now too, if I remember correctly. Yep, gym has a roof and is all looking good and the hamster wheel is still on, as it will be perpetually. And this will stay on forever. Cool. So yeah, it's really just that little bit to the office, because I've done everything else around here. I think I finally put lights into the stairs downstairs. Now uh, down to the station. Which has totally taken me about as long as it took to <laughs> flip the med bay up the right way around. Cool. So we'll get the office done for the boss. Then we'll head over to the solar axe and finish it up. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yeah, we don't have 1.0 sim speed on this world anymore. I have not been able to do anything to make it come back up to that. It's typically hovering around the, well, you can see here, somewhere between 0.8 and 0.9 is where it's stuck. Oh, that's what I need. I need to make a GPS where this is and then a GPS where the boss's quarters are so I know exactly where they align. Okay, so it's not actually too far off just drilling straight ahead. Oh dear, I'm regretting something. I might have gotten rid of all of the cargo access points around this place to try and neaten things up. So I'm having to do a lot of flights back and forth and back and forth. If I'm not careful, I'm going to go splat on one of them. So what I'm thinking for this corridor is that it needs to feel cramped. And the best way I can think of doing that is to use something I haven't actually used on this build anywhere yet, which is the passageway block. If I use that with the catwalks for the floor, I should be able to put some lights under the floor light. Oh, I didn't bring girders. Ah, dang it. So if I use this, I should be able to put some lights under the floor at various points along the way, which will allow us to get some light into the passageway blocks without expanding the corridor particularly much, which is nice. So it's got to start with something under here. So that I've got something to attach to. Then, catwalk open, this way around. Yeah, I'm gonna have to dig fairly deep in order to make that work, but it still should work. Not sure what I'm gonna do about the stairs, because I'm going to need some stairs to get up to, a, to the height of the office, but we'll deal with that when we get to it. So then it'll be passageway oriented like that. I think that'll be a nice cramped corridor feel to it. I suppose you could do it the other way round. Nah. Nah, this works better this way up. Hold up. I wonder if you can get enough light through it if I put a corner light on the outside here. That way I don't need to dig a massive hole and I might still get enough light for this to work. What I thought I would do with this was originally going to be to dig extra deep and then put some lights underneath, but... You can actually get a decent amount of lighting in here, and it's believable enough because of these emissive strips. If what I do instead is simply place some corner lights on the outside here and make their radius large enough. Since I'm never going to see any of this rock anyway, I'm not too fussed about it looking all bright and weirdly lit on the outside. It's all about how it's going to look in here. And I kind of like being able to see through the floor and seeing the rock. I don't know that you'd need to use these see-through blocks. I think standard catwalks would work as well. The reason for that is the way interior lights work is they'll penetrate through walls anyway. So you could probably have a solid block here and create this lighting effect inside a passageway by just putting lights on the outside. It's one of those nice things to take advantage of given that we don't have realistic lighting with the interior lights. If you need lighting in a space that you can't otherwise get it into, you can always take advantage of the fact that it's slightly... Well, that it's it's very much not real. So, I suppose it shouldn't have these darker segments. But I kind of like them to give an idea of how long this thing is. So I might leave them in. And then we've got just a little bit further to go and we'll be at the space where the office is. I think what I'll do instead of continuing this whole way 
right now is I'm going to go up to that office and I'm going to start building the office first and then get the stairway down to meet up with where this corridor is at now. But it's kind of exciting that this is really... As long as I don't start another new project in this base, this kind of does polish off, at least as far as I can tell, everything I started here. There were plenty of projects that I talked about doing that I really would have liked to do. One of them was put a situation capac across the whole base. That's something I'm going to have to save for Survival Unlikely though, because with the incredible amount of lighting that's in this place and the hugely ridiculous uh, variations that are... Well, hugely ridiculous variations. No, that's not what I wanted to say. And the massive variety of lighting conditions I've got around here, it's just not going to work for me to have a script to change each set of lights that has the same settings. And there would be probably, uh, I'd be guessing maybe 50 different ones of those to change their colors and then have them change back when you turn it off. So I kind of like the idea of at some point soon, when we eventually get back to the agglomeration, I'm going to mess with all the lighting. <laughs> Whenever Capac does a Capac, I will have the option, I will hopefully give myself the option of being able to click a button everything goes crazy, every alarm goes off, and maybe I'll even try and get a sound bite of something saying, warning, warning, cat back approaching, warning, warning, or something to that effect. I'll have to think about that one a bit more. But that's generally what I was thinking about that, because I, I just, it's, it's not going to be possible to have something mess with the lighting across the whole base like it does in that entryway. The entryway works, the entryway to this area works because it's a group of lights that are all the same type. And so I can switch back, or and same settings, so I can switch back and forth between them quite easily. I can't really do that across the base, especially as it's not just distance or intensity that I've changed. I've got that subtle variation in colour throughout the whole refinery area. If I were to change that, I'd have to do one programmable block, or at least from the scripts that I'm aware of, one programmable block per light. That's, that, that's insane. That's just way too much. So with my excuses for not following through on a plan that I'd <laughs> hoped to do out of the way, let's get onto this office. I'm thinking... I might get rid of one of these doors, have like a secretary space here, and then have the main office bit here. Yeah, let's do it. Alrighty, let's go take a look. So this is the secretary's room in the office. We've got a couch for people to sit on while they wait to be seen. Then we've got the secretary's little desk. There's a place for the secretary to make some coffee and other things for the waiting guests or for the boss. Then we come through here and we got the boss's room. I was struggling a bit with what to do with this space. I would really love a desk without a chair so that you could make bigger tables and you could make bigger things without having chairs everywhere. But I don't know if that's ever going to happen. So what I thought I'd do was give a couple of projection tables and then have a nice big LCD wall, which has currently got a nice... Uh, I'm thinking of it like a screensaver of the Grand Canyon on it. And then we've got a little desk in the corner here, a little table for small private meetings. Then finally through here, we have our exit to the boss's private quarters. Which actually didn't end up being quite as long as I was expecting it to be. I mean, it's still a fairly hefty walk, but... A nice, secure, private passage. Which totally circumvents the security on the main room, but we're not just... We're just not going to think about that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> it's... It's all, um... I don't know, I just thought it'd be fun to have that, so... We're going to have it, even though it doesn't make sense from a role-playing perspective. I just wanted to be there. So that is that done. I am sure there are many other things around this base that I haven't finished, but we're going to call it done. That's it for this floor. It is complete. I am happy 
with everything that's here. It's not perfect, there are things I would adjust, things I would update, things I would change, but I could do that forever. I am never satisfied with whatever I've got. And as much as I had plans for a remodel of this entryway, I kind of for nostalgic reasons want to leave this as is. Because I'm going to post this final world to the workshop for you guys to wander around and I, I really, I want to leave this bit here. I want to leave the original map on its original LCD stuck, I think it's its original LCD, I can't remember replacing it, stuck up right here. Oh no wait, I did move it. It was on a different wall I think, maybe? Anyway. And then Izzy's solar alignment script still working. Roman's script still telling me that most of the... <laughs> uh, most of all of the sandbags have run out of power. We'll, we'll just ignore that. And then my map, where the first enemy that I defeated is marked as an active enemy with a very friendly looking home symbol. I'm sure if I do a map like that in the future, it will be a lot more <laughs> interesting. But that was my first ever real attempt at making one of these image mods, and I've learnt a lot since then. So, with all that having been done, we need to go downstairs, and we need to head over to the Solar Axe to decide what it is we're going to do over there and how I'm going to lay it out. And of course the tram isn't here. Great. So over at our Solar Axe, I've got this station mostly laid out. We've got our windows with a nice curve on them. This is all going to be a very bright, sunny area. And what I was thinking of doing was to continue with that theme. So over, oh, which way does the sun set that way? Maybe over here, oh. wait, sun, where does the sun rise again? Uh, our original base is... I'm so lost! Our original base is there, so the sun rises there, goes over and sets over there. So it doesn't really matter where I put this, it's going to be pretty nicely lit by the sun. Let's zoom out a bit. Alright, so we've got our glassed over entryway here. If I continue that glassed theme and make a building that goes out to the right here a little way, then I should be able to set up, possibly just about here, a nice little display room for the Ugly Duckling. Then the rest of this area can be fairly open plan, maybe I'll make a little cafe sort of thing. In fact, that's probably the best way to go, make a little cafe. So no turnstiles, no, nothing like that. This is a memorial, this is something paid, supported, paid for, supported by the company or the government or whatever to allow anyone to come and witness the magnificence that is the ugly duckling. Oh, I couldn't keep a straight face while saying that. So, in order to get this thing welded up quickly, I'm going to head back and grab the nugget from wherever I last left it and start welding all of this up. Uh, actually... Maybe I shouldn't start welding it just yet. Maybe I should start by bringing the, the nugget over here with a bunch of components so I can lay out the rest of this space and then do the whole welding thing in one go. That is probably the smarter way to go. Oh yeah, that's right. My cut up, my, <laughs> my trebuchet is still there. Oh, well, that can stay there. It's probably not helping performance any having this thing here, but... How can I get rid of it now? The ridiculous structure that it is. Does anyone remember where I left the nugget last? I appear to have misplaced it. I also appear to have run myself out of fuel. What the heck have I done with the nugget? Where did I leave it? Um, I should probably replace that wheel while I'm here. So right click. Middle click, and weld. Oh, what have I done with the nugget? <laughs> oh dear. I have misplaced it and I don't know where. 
Buttercup, ugly duckling sandbag, base antenna. Uh, I didn't destroy it. When was I last using it? Oh, I know. It's over at the thing, isn't it? Because I brought it across here with some components. But, wait. Not here. What? What's going on? Oh, whoops. <laughs> Went to the wrong mountain. <laughs> I brought it across here and <laughs> then parked it inside the mountain. <laughs> Okie dokie. One nugget. Oops. Blammo? Uh, let's get this thing out of here. Oops. Uh, come on. I know you fit. There we are. How much stuff have I got still on board here? Uh, eh, that might actually... Wait, were there interior plates in there? Seven... Uh, Two hundred? Yeah. That might be enough to get us started anyway. I might just fly straight to the solar axe and park and get moving on this construction. What I might do... Looking at the battery power on this thing and the fact that I'm going to need to fly back and forth a few times. I might see if I've got enough stuff to put a connector on here and use the solar axe to at least charge one vehicle <laughs> one time. Because uh, I don't think I've ever actually used the power from it to do anything. But that's alright. Now that it's a shrine, I feel okay about it being ridiculously oversized, completely unnecessary. And... Yeah, it makes me feel okay about that. Maybe over here I'll do, so that it's not in the way. Three small steel tubes. Drat. Alright, back to the base. We... For a second I thought, <laughs> thought that the... <laughs> For a second I thought the physics lag was going to get the better of me then, as I got a little too cocky flying that way. <sighs> How quickly are these batteries charging? Pretty much, yep, three batteries and they are all charging as fast as possible because the output from the solar axe is so great. Uh, awesome. Alright. We've got this wall here with our curve coming down. Maybe I'll bring the curve... Oh. No, no, no. I know what I'll do. I know how to do this. If I bring this square across here, bring it to the same distance out as this segment, then I can build another little glassed-in se section on the other side that looks identical. That way we can have a main entrance coming up either side into those glassed-in areas. One is the folly or the tram station and the other side will be the display case for the ugly duckling perfect so we're just one beyond our spotlights there we go and i suppose it's at this point i should probably make this a multiplayer game and bring in some extra cameras so we can start a proper time lapse because it wouldn't be the finale of survival maybe without some or several epic time lapses. So let's land, let's save, because I actually have this as an offline game at the moment.
Now that the sun's up, I thought I would start laying out the design for the Ugly Ducklings display. I think I'd like to have it somewhere over this side, possibly in this middle bit, so that it's got clear views from both sides, we've got a nice view out to the valley out this way, and it's all going to be glassed overhead, which I think will look pretty good. I'm debating though whether I sink it down into the ground, I think I will. Because if I sink it into the ground a little bit, then we'll have a bit of a mirror to what happens over the other side where it's got the lift that goes down to the tram. Oops. Like you have a jetpack. <laughs> to the tram stop. Oh. Okay. Let's dump the plates we've got and let's grind out a bit of this floor. It's not so bad that I welded this up and now I'm going to grind it out because, to be honest, at least... I have a bit of a better idea of how this all lays out now. Do I want it smoothly sunk into the ground? Maybe I do. Maybe I'll start with a inverted corner. And I've really got to stop falling into holes. So we start with that, and then we go with a couple of straight. One slope or two? Do I have room for two? I don't think I do. Ah! Oh, I just thought of an idea that it might, might look interesting. So instead of having the Ugly Duckling just out in the open, I might put a little glass covering over it, which means there's a good reason for having this floor sunk, so that I've got enough room that I can make that glass covering. So that shape should work reasonably well for the Ugly Duckling. If I have a connector, say, here, I should be able to land on it, but probably don't want to put the connector directly in the ground. I'd rather have it so we can see more of it, maybe? I guess I'll have to play with that once I get the Ugly Duckling into position. So I'll put a conveyor junction in that hole and then I'll put a connector on top and then the Ugly Duckling can sit on there. Then, if we glass in the rest of this space, I've still got to decide how I'm going to do this front wall and this rear wall. And also, how to do the glass around here. Because I've got these bits making sense, and I should probably continue this along here. I'm also going to knock out this wall, since my original plan had this being in separate, all separate rooms, but now I kind of want to have a big, nice, open space. A nice, very clear contrast to what's in the main base, where it's all underground so we can't really have big open spaces and a huge contrast to the silo where everything is as cramped as I could make it to make it all miserable and horrible. One thing I'm learning while being here is that oh boy it is so nice building outside building where you see the sun and the shadows passing you see a sense you get a sense of time passing. I, I know that's not normally what we may want when we're playing a game. You kind of want to lose that track of time, but I just, ah, oh, after being underground for so long, every time I build outside, it just reminds me that this game is beautiful and whenever I have the chance, I am going to be building outside. Now, I need to decide how I'm going to lay out some sort of rest and relaxation area. So the sort of things I want to use for that are going to be, let's pop them here. I want a bit of a kitchen cafe sort of feel. So that's going to be using either these tables and chairs, but I don't think I'll go that. I think I'm going to go the desks and put the four of them together. I might put some couches around, some planters. We're going to need some kitchen. Where's the kitchen? kitchen. suppose I should have some bathrooms here, but I'm not going to use those toilets because they don't really fit. I'll need that. I'll need that. I'll need to make some sort of restroom area here. Maybe I can put it on this side of the main pillar. So if I block off here, get rid of that. I should be able to pop a 
door in there. Bring this wall all the way along as well. Then I can hollow out a little bit of the center pillar there since this will all be covering it up anyway. And that should give me enough room to make a bathroom. Which will, whoops. Which should fit in with the rest of the design reasonably well. So here we go. Even though I haven't welded it up yet, we've got sinks on this side, we've got toilets in here, we've got our wall in using this same sort of layout that I used over in the main base. And that makes it so we've got some decent facilities built here now. With that done, now we can get onto the real design stuff. So if I'm going to be covering this with glass on the inside as well as that glass over there, I don't really want to have anything too close, but maybe I'll pop sort of an information desk down here. And if I want to do that, maybe I could. Or maybe I use half walls. That might work better. So it's either going to be cover half walls or the steel catwalk wall. And I might just use the cover walls. Pop them there. And one there. Because we need a way in. So that'll be sort of like an information desk where people can come and... You can imagine there being brochures lined up along there. Then... I'm going to start down this end because this end's already got all the various bits. And maybe I'll put the cafe... The kitchen area for the cafe or bar sort of thing in here. Like that. I really like this design. Whoever did this for the vanilla space station in the encounters it was a great idea it's such a nice way of making like a little bar that people can sit at then we might pop a couple of tables over here though these are obviously not going to be the favored tables because they don't have a view and the rest of them I want to put oh I could even do little twin tables like this yeah 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 yeah, yeah. There we go. Tables with a few. So yeah, that's kind of what my idea will be. I'm going to jump ahead to when I've got this all welded up and placed out because then we can bring... Oh no, because then <laughs> I can talk about the final job for the Ugly Duckling because it has one last task to complete before I end up bringing it to its plinth here and enclosing it in glass. So let's get on with this job. Oh, I just thought of something. Yeah, this is something I wanted to do, but so I haven't built anything yet, but one little touch that I think will suit the solar axe very well is turning this to clean armor. There we go. All nice and pristine. This is the place for that. A lot of my other builds, I kind of like the scruffy armor, and I think I'm going to leave it for the outdoor bit of the tower, but for this indoor section, I think the clean look just works here. Okay, I think this is pretty much done, and for the sake of a time lapse, I must have messed with the day mood length, because this day has just dragged on and on and on and on and on. Oh man, I think I must have messed with it at some point. Oh well, let's go take a look. So as we enter, we're met with a nice desk, a few plants on either side to make it all into a nice entry area. We've also got our station behind us with some safety barricades. I've put a proper connector on the back of this thing. We've got our bathroom in there. Let's close the doors on that. And then we come around here. Welcome to the Ugly Duckling Museum. Now on these signs I put a bit of information that kind of mostly holds true for the Ugly Duckling. Well, yeah, I, I don't think I outright lied on any of them. But you can read these or pause the <laughs> video to read them. Or you can read them when I upload the world for everyone to have a look at themselves. Then, we have around here a few couches. I've left this space relatively open. 
I'm not sure whether I want to put anything here. I kind of like it open. If I can think of more text to put on, I might put a few more LCDs back to back like I did with these ones. So there's a bit more there. And then we come to where the Ugly Duckling will sit. The roof is still not in because I need to bring the Ugly Duckling in before I do that. Instead of the half walls here, I put some plants in because I thought they looked a bit nicer as the side wall. I left this one this way since we still need a way to get into that space. Then our smattering of tables, some of which have spectacular views. Check that out. Now that is dining with a view. That's incredible. This is just such a perfect spot. Seriously, the next time I build a base on Earth, I am picking an elevated position. I don't care about the lack of defense it gives you, but I am having a view like this. I can see planets, moons, it's, I can see an ice lake. This is just, this is how I should build in the future. <laughs> I've got more tables around here. I've got our bar that we put in before. And then I've put a couple of LCDs up here. I'm thinking I'll just pop like the news up on them and that sort of thing. You can then take the elevator up to the top, which is still incredibly slow. <laughs> uh, I forgot how slow this thing was. I should change that at some point because I want to get out. I want to get out. <sighs> and once you were up here, I suppose I could put some fences in up here, but you know what? I feel like... Uh, maybe I could put a few just around this segment. So you can come up here and you can have an outdoor viewing of everything from here. Unfortunately, you can't actually see the main base from here, which would be cool if you could, because then you could have a nice little viewing platform to there. But at least we can have an outdoor perspective on that awesome view from that chair before, because seriously, how could you not love this? Oh, let's get rid of the HUD. How could you not love this? It's awesome. So. Now that we've got all of this in place, that means we're ready to talk about the plan for the Ugly Duckling's final job. So last time I launched a missile against the enemy base. That means I can build missiles. And I know how to build stage stuff. And what better way to finish a Space Engineers series than by going to space. <laughs> so I'm going to do it. I'm going to build a rocket. It's going to be ridiculously complicated. It's going to be unnecessarily complicated. And it's going to take me from the silo, because that's where I'm going to build it. It's going to be properly rocket shaped. I'm going to build it from the silo to take us all the way. And I'm going to leave the nugget there. Uh, no, I won't. No, I won't. Oh, yes, I will, because I will use it later when I bring the ugly duckling up here. It's going to go from the silo all the way to space, and I'm going to leave myself with a teeny tiny little capsule. So that's going to be the most challenging bit of the design. For the base of it, I'm pretty much going to go with the same design I had last time. So it's going to be a rocket with small grid using hydrogen big thrusters at the bottom. And then finally, the capsule assuming I've collected enough platinum over the last year and a half. Actually, when did I release the fourth of the I started in August? No, I started in October. Okay, we're just under two years <laughs> since the beginning. So assuming I've collected enough platinum from all of the various things I've shot down, 22 to five. Fighter cockpit. Oh, that must be inside the. Oh, yep. So I got 24. How much do I need to make six small ion thrusters? Because that's what I'm going to power. Or, yeah, that's what I'm going to use as thrusters on the final capsule. So, regardless of how much fuel I have left in any of the stages, I'm going to pop them at various heights so that that last little itch out to space will be done with just 
the uh, oh, I have got plenty to make it with just the capsule and its tiny little bit of ion thrust and there we go we should have everything we need with all of the vast numbers of other components that I've got oh we already had 75 thruster components <laughs> oops <laughs> uh, I totally forgot uh that's right, I picked him up from one of the bases. Well then, since that's a thing, let's head over to the silo. Just make sure everything is ready for us to get started on here. So the ugly duckling can stay there. It's going to, so its final job. All right, I got distracted before I actually said what its final job is. Its final job is fueling this ship. The Ugly Duckling is going to collect the ice necessary for us to get to space because it's just too fitting f to do it any other way. The idea that this was responsible for collecting my first ship-based stuff in the whole of me playing this game, this save, and that it's also going to be the thing that collects the fuel that gets me off the planet has that I've been bound to in my space engineers game since the very beginning I just like that too much and let's fix the floor so the plan is to attach something to this connector the same way we did with the other missile and before we do that though I'm going to grab a light and I'm going to pop it down here because if I don't the flickering in the time lapse will be horrendous there we go now it looks nice and lit Plus it means you'll be able to see what I'm doing better than if I just left it with the red lights or with no lights. So, same plan as before. Start by adding a connector like so. And then we go with our large thrusters. We're going to go four around just black before. And you'll understand why I need so much thrust once I get up to the design of the top capsule. This thing's going to be quite heavy because I want to have a little bit of fun with it. I want to make it a little more complicated since I'm not going to be doing a triplicate stage rocket or, you know, some multi-stage behemoth that has to drop stuff every kilometer or so. I'm instead going to go with a capsule that has a small grid airtight door. And that's always an interesting challenge because small grid airtight doors are quite large. I've never been able to make one that's particularly small and that's because you have to use merge blocks. And obviously if you're going to use merge blocks that can't be the door itself because then it blocks the whole, the, the second merge block. It'll make sense in a second. So we'll go with three tanks, then a connector because I do want this to pipe to the next stage otherwise we're going to have the problem of having to manually load up any O2 H2 generator or any oxygen tank that sort of thing into the next stage but this way we'll be able to load up straight from the base now I've got a couple of options for this door and I'm thinking something that hatches from the top might be the best design. So I'm going to lay out the parts that we need first. And I've already laid out a few of the things that I want on my hopper. That's the survival kit, the O2H2 generator. We don't need any more tanks. I don't think we're going to go with a medium cargo container. But we will need a gyroscope on this top stage. We will need some ion thrusters. We're going to need rotor, merge block, small cargo container, buttons. Yeah, get rid of that one there. And uh... oh, that's right. I want to. I do want to put an oxygen tank on this thing. I need to have that extra capacity for storing the oxygen that's going to evacuate out of the volume of the capsule slash mini drone. I guess we can think of it as. Now, this thing's going to probably need to be lopsided or, you know, taller in one dimension than the other. I don't think I can make this properly round, or at least I'm not easily going to be able to. So what I might start with is the O2H2 generator. Which side did I put the light on? That side. 
just so this works well for the time lapse. Pop the O2H2 generator that way, then pop a tank on. Oh, might need a armor block to place this. Tank on there, because that'll link those two together. And then on that, we could, I guess, place the survival kit. That would put it in the in what I'm thinking of as the floor of this thing, though. Which I'm not sure how I feel about. <laughs> I kind of prefer the idea of it being up on a wall. Um, I suppose it could work, though. Maybe if I change the orientation a bit. Think of that as a wall. And I think of the door rather than a roof being one of the sides and bring it out this side. I guess that could work. All right, we'll try that. So we've got O2H2 generator, oxygen tank. We've got survival kit. We're going to need to have some batteries some timer blocks so battery wise and all of this is going to have to be made airtight as well which is going to be a difficult challenge in terms of how we go about doing that without it looking horrid so I wonder if maybe instead of trying to make the outside airtight we make an inside pocket because one of the big problems with trying to coat something in armor is you have to either greeble it quite considerably to make it look good. Well, you pretty much have to greeble it. Or you have to stick components out, I find, to make it look interesting. So I might stick components on the outside if I can make a volume that's airtight involving these blocks. So I'm going to weld up these three. And then I'm going to see if I can make a volume airtight with them as part of the walls. Because that will be useful to know in terms of how I go with the rest of this design. So, add that, add that, add that. So I was just right clicking on those to add them to the build planner. And that should add the components for each of them to my list. And then I can just middle click on this and it'll grab the bits that I need. Assuming I have them in the base. Oh, clearly it did not add the survival kit properly. Or I did something else weird. All right, so my plan to test the air tightness of these blocks is to simply make a box with them as part of the wall. An event, of course, so that I can see if I can depressurize it. There are mods like build info that can help you find air leaks in builds. I've never tested it to use it on small grid though, so I don't know that it works on that. But this is going to be a nice vanilla test for it anyway. Because it'll be so much better if I can do this, because then I can have the batteries showing on the outside, I can have various other bits and pieces, and I can hopefully have a much better looking capsule than <laughs> what I was likely going to end up with which was going to be a weird ovoid shape that didn't really have all of the armor pieces it needed to make it smooth this is going to be interesting and clangy if i have to turn around too much in here okay from the armor standpoint once this is welded up this should be an airtight space okay vent so vent is showing room pressure not pressurized depressurize Okay, it's not airtight. Fine. That's good to know. So at least one of the blocks I'm using here is not airtight. And I'm going to bet it's the O2 tank. Because it's got the biggest gap. The visual gap on the survival kit's pretty small. So I'm suspicious it could be airtight. As there are a number of blocks in Space Engineers that are. So what we are going to do is have to think about what's accessible in this airtight space and what's not going to be. I would like the survival kit to be accessible internally. Oops. So that's one thing. So I guess we will have to go with the outer shell, 
and I have some ideas about how we'll make that look a little bit better when we get to it. So I'll start with laying everything out. We'll get the rough idea of where everything needs to be, then build the door. Okay, so that's going to be the shape. We need a floor. I wonder if maybe I should use, I should create a bit more space here. Deliberately go bigger instead of trying to make this as cramped as possible. And the reason I'm thinking of going a bit bigger is if I can make this an extra block wider in each way, I could actually create a... I think things are going to look a lot better. So let's start with pipes like that. We need to do that. Then we'll pop our survival kit. No. Then we'll pop our oxygen tank on there. Oh, oh, oh. I think I just may have made this a whole lot better for myself. Uh, let's pop a small conveyor junction there. Then put that there and put the survival kit on this side. Like, uh, is that the right way around? Yep. There we go. Then we've got a nice spot for our seat between those two. And then I could have the top hinging off. Or I could have this top hinging off. Or the near the top. This top? Yeah. Anyway, either way, I've created a much easier symmetry to deal with, which is preferable. So we've got O2H2 gen, we've got oxygen tank, we've got survival kit, and we need to have power, thrust, control, antenna, maybe a little bit of cargo space. In fact, could go for a decent sized cargo on this though not properly accessible from most places but if I put a medium cargo there and then put a where's my battery a battery there these sides are both going to the same length we're now level we've taken up the same space on each side which will make any symmetry in the armor design much simpler so that's our power then we need a vent, so we can pop a vent on this thing with the way I've arranged it. Uh, yeah, we'll pop it up that way. Then we'll need a floor. Yes, 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 yes. I can put a turret on the bottom. Yeah. All right, let's weld and then keep thinking about how we're going to continue the rest of this. While running past this, it made me think maybe I should have some sort of power generation capacity on board this vessel. So I'm going to add a hydrogen engine somewhere on here. So I could put it somewhere underneath here. I think that's probably the best spot because otherwise it's going to be sticking out to the side. Although you could put a twin set, one on each side over here, but I think that's excessive. We do not need that much power generation. What I do need is a few more armor plates so I can actually build stuff. And we'll turn you off because I don't need you to be on. I don't want you to use up any of the ice that we eventually load this thing up with. And then our seat is going to go in the middle here. Yeah, the seat should go back as far as it can. That way when we're standing here we should still be able to easily access the survival kit. And then hop in here and we'll have a nice cocoon since with no small grid glass, we're not going to be able to see out. I'm going to need to make sure I put plenty of cameras on the outside. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to see. I mean, third person camera and all that, but still. So now for the beginning of the tricky part. We need a door. And the way the doors have to work for small grid is... If I jump to that hopper. What we need is a merge block on the main grid and a merge block on the door. Obviously that can't be the opening itself because then the merge blocks that's attached to the main grid is in the way. So we need to have a door that is big enough to have both a merge block and a hole big enough to fit the character. That makes it pretty large because you need a decent sized gap to go through. If you poke yourself through head first, it only needs to be three by three. But if you want to be able to fly through like this it needs to be three by four preferably three by five for comfort but three by four you can fit through so if we're going to be doing that i'm going to need to 
create a space for I guess if we have don't like the idea of having the merge block all the way down here but I think it may have to be if we go merge block there and then if I have a block here with a rotor on like that and then here comes the interesting part you need another subgrid you can't just have the one subgrid for this to work nicely so if i just have this single rotor here and attempt to put a merge block onto this subgrid that i'm highlighting now that will create a situation where you are trying to have the main grid be the subgrid which doesn't work because as soon as those two pieces merge they try to become part of the same thing and then you have a rotor attached twice to the same thing and you can't do that so we need an intermediary subgrid and the way we're going to do that is with a piston since the times when i tested doing this before where i simply stacked two rotors on top of each other like this it didn't work. Now that may be because of the orientation I used here. You might be able to do it with two rotors, but I found that pistons are a lot more capable of being warped in ways that you need them to be so that you can have your door work and lock down even while it remains attached to that rotor. I've got a million different ideas for how this could work and I don't know which one's actually going to work in terms of making it look any good. Uh... So I'm just going to go with one and hope for the best. If we have our rows like that, and then we attach a piston on... No. Rotor needs to move one block over. Huh. I was originally thinking I'd do this as a rotor door, so the door would swing out and then swing back up. But I think I might use the piston to control it. So if we have our... I think we want to put the rotor on a block so we get a bit more clearance in here that that way and then have a piston pointing downward so piston going like so go with the blast door edge just for these two pieces and then the rest of this needs to be full blocks because we need to create that airtight link but i don't want to have to make the airtight gap any bigger okay this will start making sense very soon so i'm building this in the closed position this is the position it'll be in when the merge blocks are locked. Alright, we should... Okay, here we go. We can't place this merge block right now, but... If I grab this merge block that's already built and turn it off, we can. On, we can't. Off, we can. If I'd known that during my wrong way downstream where I struggled with this exact issue, that would have been really cool. Thankfully, I was pointed to this shortly after so now I can take advantage of knowing how to deal with it. Now if I turn this on they'll be able to lock and that's with all of these still attached so that's perfect that's exactly what I want because now I can make my door and I won't hear clanging every time I place a block down but it also shows that the piston allows that flexibility for this to lock even though it kind of is pushing things out of a whack from where they want to be. So the thing you've got to do with doors like this is make sure you're leaving only an edge joining the door to the main grid. So you can't have a situation where you've got an actual join between the blocks. As soon as you do that, you're in trouble because you won't be able to detach the thing when you want to move the door out of the way. Unfortunately, this sort of door you can't really do conveyors because if you try and do conveyors you'll end up with a well you'll end up with a join that you can't break so you can't really do that so i'm going to start with some greebling on the door just because i'm going to be horribly upset if it's all flat and boring doesn't need to be a square door but i'm going to stick with this rough shape to make life simpler and now for the main ship armor shape what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out the armor design for this thing first. I'm going to do all of that and then I'm going to add the thrusters and all the other various bits and pieces after the armor's all laid out because I think focusing on air tightness first is going to make this easier since it's a core part of this design. 
Alright, that looks like an okay shape for the door. And I'm pretty sure, despite this gap here, that this will be technically airtight. Merge blocks are missing these little corner pieces, but from what I've tested, they do remain airtight. So we don't need to worry about those bits. And that makes the door a lot easier to design if you can keep that in mind. So now I just need to figure out how I'm going to airtight the bottom and each side of this thing in a way that doesn't look awful. And that is where the true difficult spots begin. Oy. Now, while I'm going through this, I should probably add in some of the critical functional blocks, like a couple of timers in here, since I'm going to need to use timers to operate the doors. And knowing my luck, <laughs> well, not luck, knowing my ability with timers, I am going to end up using far more of them than I need to. I think two for open and two for close is enough. Overall, I'm not too unhappy with the shape so far. Having these little gullies running down the sides, I feel like it adds enough interest that this thing doesn't look horrible. I am not happy with the way the piston looks, but I don't think there's a lot I can do to fix that. Perhaps adding a little bit of flair to it will make me a teensy bit happier. I could attempt to make this door have pistons on both sides so there is symmetry there but that feels like a lot more I don't know I'll pr this asymmetry will probably grow on me to be honest and maybe a gyroscope or two in here maybe just one if we go oh we need a remote control block too so gyro do that first and then we'll add a remote control block next to that since I'm sitting in a seat I need some way to control you could do something that works using, yeah. Like this thing would be so much easier if I just built a cockpit. Cockpits are airtight. I could have everything piped up to it. It'll all work nicely, but where's the challenge? So that's why I'm going with this uh, somewhat more involved design. Uh, yeah, an antenna down there will work just fine. Also, I put that upside down. There you go, we got an antenna. I could have gone with a beacon, but I decided to go with an antenna because I wanted to be able to remote this ship if that became an option. So if, uh, well, if it became necessary, not an option. I wanted to have that option if it became necessary is what I meant to say. One of the challenges you always face with designing stuff in Space Engineers is the limited number of sh block shapes we've got available. You need to decide where you want to have the pieces fail to smoothly aligned to one another and sometimes that can be really easy to decide and sometimes that can be an absolute nightmare when i'm doing something that's a little more militaristic it's a bit easier because you can keep that blocky shape and you can go a bit crazy with it you can add little flares and whatnot but when you're doing something industrial i tend to just go with using the functional blocks to create details so that i can hide those bits where it doesn't quite align with a detailed functional block. Now in this case, what I'm thinking I will do is pop our thrusters off to the side here. So I could put a pair of them in there and that's going to create a reason for these little tapered bits and also a reason for those parts to stick out beyond the rest of the shape. So they're not going to cook anything that you connect to. And hopefully that's going to work in terms of making this look right. Uh, I think I might have to make that flat. I know this is a lot more thrust than I was planning, but if I do that and put three in with that arrangement, those flat parts I think will look okay. Then we'll have six forward thrusters. Yeah, and the thrusters are airtight, so that gives us our airtightness too. Hmm. I'm actually kind of happy with that. Looks a little bit utilitarian because it's all quite a blocky ship, but I think that works in its favour a little bit. Gonna need to make sure I turn those off since they're going to be a problem. Ion, off. 
Subgrids really do like to thrust like crazy. Cool. So we've got our... We are upside down. That's the top of our ship. We've got our forward thrust. We've got our armor most of the way around. Now I just need to create that airtight pocket in here. And test that it's working. Then I can add the thrusters in the other directions. And... The thing I'm in two minds about is what sort of weapon I'm going to attach on the bottom here. Because this bottom surface would otherwise be very bland and flat, aside from the bulge that's going to need to be there for the hydrogen engine, I'm thinking what I might do is have like a little bottom mounted pair of Gatlings. Not the most effective weapons and certainly not the most effective placements since they're going to be offset from the center of the craft. But it could be an interesting little thing to put there. I was basically thinking of putting a cube here and then a pair of Gatlings either side. So one there, one there. As a nice little bottom mounted gun just for basic defense. Obviously this ship being made the way it is has not got any military intent. That's This is more of a last ditch protect yourself sort of thing. Maybe scare off the most ridiculously harmless of pirates. So I'm kind of thinking of this a bit like a survival exploration pod as opposed to anything more advanced. And I was originally thinking of turret, but turrets are so big. I think just adding those will be enough. Yeah, cool. That's a bit of detail on the bottom. So things like turrets, guns and stuff like that, you can use to add detail around the place. All right. This is the interesting part. What we want is... I think I'm going to start with a few of these. <laughs> This thing looks like a bit of a, uh, or kind of looks like a flying version of a tank right now because it's kind of that squat, flat shape. It's got this about where you'd expect to see an aerial. Uh, oh well, that's not too bad. At least, at least it's got some sort of shape to it. But I'm a little bit in trouble because I don't know how I'm going to do this front section. I'm really unsure, but what I'm going to do first is check if this is airtight, since I'm probably going to put blocks in at this point anyway. So now I should be able to test. Let's, oh, we need a couple of buttons. Let's do the buttons as well. We'll make the door functional while we're here. All right, so button to open, where shall we put you? This has side attachment points, but that should be safe there anyway. All right. Double block off. Piston extend. It's a bit rough, but it works. Pop in the chair. In fact, we should be, I should make it so that we can fly in. And then we have another button. Where will I put the button? Maybe there. It's a safe spot. Okay, so. Timer blocks. So, for the closing, what I need it to do is... I need it to extend the piston. And then I need it to activate door close 2. Just start. And then... Door close 2. Set up actions will be uh, merge toggle on and that's it that'll be the closed sequence for the open sequence what I need it to do is turn off the merge block then activate the second open timer which will then Retract the piston. Extend the piston. And they shouldn't need to have more than a two second delay on them. So, button. 
You are going to... Uh, no. What am I doing? Time block. Oh. I'm going to want to have a second... An extra button for opening. <laughs> uh, trigger now. Timer block. Uh, merge block's on. I think I might have set the piston up wrong. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we are inside. Let's check the vent. Vent. Air vent 2. Now, we are losing room pressure because I am breathing the air that is in this volume. If I turn this to depressurize, I'm going to suffocate. <laughs> so, we should be able to... Oh! Oh, 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 oh. We should... Be able to tie the door opening and closing into the air vent. Considering how quickly that happens. Uh, timer block. Timer block open. Set up actions. Vent. So for opening, I want it to depressurize. Then for closing, I want it to repressurize. And I shouldn't need a second button for the opening because I just want this to set up, be set up to open so you can open it from the outside. I don't need it to be able to close from the outside. So if I want to close it, I can simply do that. It's clunky, it's awkward, but it works. <laughs> it properly works. All right, we have air tightness on the inside. Nice. Now we just need something for this blank, flat, horrible looking front on this thing. And I might try something a little... Hmm. What else could I put in there that would make sense on the front? I need a camera. So there's that much. That's not really a lot to fit in there. Let's have a look at how this turns out if I just do something really basic like this. I know I've got fewer reverse thrusters than forward thrusters and I'm okay with that. I tend to like putting a little bit of that sort of asymmetry in my builds. Huh. I don't immediately hate that look. I think given the blocky, tanky nature of this, that actually kind of works. I'm going to leave that. Now. We've got the rear design, we've got the front, it's all built. I just have to work out where I'm going to put the downward thrusters, the upward thrusters, and the left and rightward thrusters. I could leave it without them. Uh, I am one of these people that likes difficult to control vehicles, but I think in this case that it would be a mistake to do so. So I might use this little gully along the side. Oh, I can't. Hmm. Can't use the gully along the side because that is directly against blocks. So what could I do? I have an idea. If I cut out that, that, that. No, I can't do that. Ah, nuts. I was about to inset the thrusters into here. But as soon as I do that, I create an opening straight to the survival kit, which will lose us our air tightness. Dang. Uh, this could be tricky. That might be the spot where it go, where the thrusters go. In fact, that kind of works ni nicely. So that should, if I put those in there, remain airtight. Let's see if I've got space on this side to do the same. Please? Ah, I do. Awesome. Now I'm really glad I added that extra little bit of space in there when I was starting out this build because I was going to make it really tight, but if I had done that, I wouldn't have had space to put those in. Now we got the same idea on here. I think I do. So these ones going to have to stick out. So there we go. We got up, left, right. Now I just need to figure out where I'm going to put down. Do you know what? I think this is the perfect spot. I really hated that this corner just went to nothing. So if I instead put a thruster here, it looks 
like it's deliberate. All right, so let's get some directional thrusters on this. I'm not gonna do a huge amount of greebling on this rocket. I'm gonna keep it quite simple. I like that the tanks are exposed. This thing's not gonna get into any degree of combat, so it doesn't need any protection, but I would like to at least put some streamlining over this thruster on each side. I could put four batteries on to make the symmetry like that, but I don't think I will. Uh, I think I'll do something relatively simple. Ah, that's something I want to do. I want to add an antenna to this base piece simply to be able to connect to it from the ground and set up one of those camera angles where you watch the top stage pull away as this thing falls or vice versa. I kind of want to be able to record it from both points of view and see how it ends up looking. I think it'll... Oh, actually, no. That's why I want it. Because if I've got it, I'll be able to... Uh... Oh, yeah. I'll be able to watch this thing go all the way down until it crashes into the ground. <laughs> Maybe I'll put parachutes on it. I might put parachutes on it. We'll make it recoverable, even though I am not coming back. But because I'd like to see if I can do this. So I think if we're going to have parachutes, we should pop them up here. Do the Kerbal, do what I think of as the Kerbal style of parachutes, which is always more. You can never have enough. I reckon four should probably do the trick in terms of slowing this down enough though. Cool. Well, I now need to use the Ugly Duckling for its final task. The Ugly Duckling needs to go and collect a whole bunch of ice so that I can fill these tanks. And once I've filled the tanks, I'll set up all my controls and we are going to get the heck out of here. Leaving this all behind. All this history, <laughs> all this time I've spent. Oh man. It's so weird to think it has been almost two years that I've been playing this save. I've never, ever, ever played any save on any survival game that long. It's, it's incredible. The ways this game has changed in that time is just ridiculous. Uh, or are just ridiculous, I should say. I want two of these. And I want to produce some parachute canvases. So what I should do is set up the controls on the capsule so that we can change the setting on the base piece parachutes to deploy at a set height so that the toggle auto deploy on once we're ready for disconnect which will be an altitude high enough that we won't need to worry so remote control control okay shoots stage one shoots so groups Auto deploy on and off. Apart from some ammo, that's done. Have I got any ammo on this base? Don't think I do. Uh, 25. Nope. I'll go collect some ammo and then I'm going to start taking the ugly duckling out. Although it is pitch dark. Well, I say although it's pitch dark, but given the number of times I've flown the ugly duckling in conditions where I really, really shouldn't have, why would I change that now? Uh, 10 cases will do. Let's grab a drill. Let's grab a rifle. Let's grab a welder. And I don't have a Tech 3 grinder, so and I can't be bothered making one. Let's just grab a proficient grinder. And some ammo. And we'll put some ammo in the cargo container inside the thing as well. And tools. And one of the bottles that I'm carrying. There we go. Apart from an oxygen bottle, that's loaded up. And I'm not going to worry about an oxygen bottle. Alrighty, for one of your final flights, although you're probably going to have to fly a whole bunch of times because I've got to get a lot of ice. Let's do this thing. Uh, I should be able to just press one. Nope, that didn't work. 
There we go. Apparently, I did not use my timer block to lock down when I last locked down. <laughs> so I shut everything off. Flying at night. Let's not destroy this on our last flight. Uh, turn off our braking thrusters. Let's cruise. Apart from the fact that this makes me dizzy, I kind of like it. I'd need to do it with spectator cam to slow down the turning speed. tanks are going to be full. The Ugly Duckling has done its job. Sweet. And before dawn too. So let's fly up to its final resting place. Over at the Solar Axe. It's a bittersweet moment this. <laughs> Thinking back, this is kind of the, the first of the last things. Down we go. into your display spot. And lock. That kind of looks... I'm quite happy with that. I was thinking of something far more complex when I originally decided I wanted to do a display cabinet for this, but as it turns out, I think simplicity is my friend here. So I'm going to cover this thing in glass with the reflective side in so that we can see through nicely. Alrighty, ugly duckling. Here you stay. And there we are. One glass display cabinet for the ugly duckling so it will never get harmed by me flipping it over by me upgrading it to suit a new purpose that it was never originally intended for. To me, thinking back to when I first placed that silly position of that medium cargo container so that it just didn't line up to anything nicely. Ah, uh, you've been the workhorse. But now, here you shall remain. All right, we've got a roof. We've got a solar axe station. Let's take the nugget back home. And then I'm going to indulge in one last little bit of nostalgia. And that is realizing that I can't get this out. No. Oh. Drat, well, fine, you stay here. You built this place, you can stay here too. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'd have to grind my way out. I'm not gonna do that. Nope, nope. But the last little bit of nostalgia I'm going to indulge myself in is loading up a few archived versions of this before we make our launch. So I'm going to set myself to my usual spot to watch the sunrise. So when we come back, we're gonna be looking over this valley for the last time. When I think back to starting this, I had so many different plans about how to start this series. In fact, I might even show you guys a little video I recorded because I was going to do something that was <sighs> a little bit scripted, a bit role playing, all that sort of thing. And to be honest, it was going to be a bit tacky, but I think I'll show you guys the footage anyway. Basically, what this is, is me running off a ship as it's getting attacked, trying to find my way out, and then eventually getting onto this horrid looking thing that has almost like a solar mohawk and trying to fly out down to the planet. And then I was gonna land in that thing and start it off. But then I thought about it a bit more and realized that maybe the more exciting way to start the series would be to just 
start it. Start in a position where we don't have much, but we've got something different to what you started with in the vanilla game at that time. So instead of starting with a massive lander that's got everything, including reactors and all that, I was going to go reactorless and have this horrible version of the tick that only had 3x3 wheels and has all of its wheels set up so that it can't really drive. And then, part of my dreams at the time had been... Is it oh, it's still there! I wasn't sure this would still be here. So the medical components weren't even in the cargo container. I knew I had to pick them up and put them in before they disappeared. And there's the map. So it isn't in its original position. I've turned it around. A map, a battery, a kitchen. And that's all. Let's have a look at how much things changed over the first 10 episodes. From this vehicle to... Well, something a little more exciting, I think. So with 10 episodes in, we've got this railing out here. We've got our solar tower. And this is the... Is this the taller solar tower? Or is this before I extended it? I can't really tell. You'd think I'd be able to. I think it might be the tall, slightly taller one because it's got the bigger solar arrays on it. We've got the tick in its current, or almost its current configuration, I think. No, it's not VTOL yet. It's just wheeled. Okay. Doesn't have the vectored thrust. I've got its weirdo connector down here because we still haven't even thought about the hangar. Now, we've got a refinery on the side. What does it look like on the inside in here? Oh, that's right. Tons and tons of power efficiency modules. Some pink doors that weren't pink back then. Oh! And arc furnaces. These were arc furnaces back then. An assembler. Two assemblers covered in power efficiency modules and I had started work on the refinery room cool I think I'd even at this point yep I'd even laid out the assembler room that took another hundred episodes to get finished <laughs> well let's see what another 10 episodes gives us so we're yellow now and the tick is VTOL and we've started producing ooh Nice, we've started producing sandbags. The Ugly Duckling is here! I think the Ugly Duckling must have been on the roof before. Oh, and the Butterball is here as well. It's complete. I think this was just after I'd completed it as well. Solar tower's all nice and pretty. We've still got no hangar. I don't think the inside changed terribly much in the last 10 episodes. Although I could be wrong, because the refinery is gone from here. Still got the med bay up here. Started putting in the design for the hallway, which remains surprisingly unchanged throughout. We've got our first server room and we've got our triple refinery set up in here and presumably the assemblers down there. Progress was relatively quick over those first 20 episodes. Let's keep going. I'm going to guess I had a reason for this, but I created a 25th episode. I think I know why, and I think I just got a glimpse of the purple that explains why. We have the start of the hangar. The very, very basic beginnings of it. With a tick park down here, butterball, ugly duckling, and our original tunnel that goes up to the main floor of the station. Well, up to the assembler floor anyway. The refinery room, I don't think it changes for quite a while yet. And nothing much changed in here because I was working on that hangar. Still using the battery status script. He stopped using it because it stopped working for me. Let's continue on. Okay, this time I'm down in the hangar. And it looks like I've started the entryway. Oh, and I've started the doors. I've also let the ugly duckling disconnect from the base. Oh! Oh, 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 we've got an elevator. Oh, and the music's working. Cool. The old elevator that never actually got its window put in here. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. Oh, no. <laughs> Dang it. There we go. 
<laughs> I forgot this one was sensor run so that we end up going up. Now weird little bump because I wanted to make the blast doors line up with the floor. We've got our corridor that remains unchanged for ages. And yeah, maybe I only welded up a little bit in here. All right. And oh, let's just check outside. What does outside look like? Look, what does outside look like? Got blue chairs. I think we've lost no more connector out there. We don't have a mess of sandbags. We've probably got a mess of sandbags off in the distance though. But let us continue. Alrighty, I have loaded inside. I'm... Yep, that's all still the same. I suspect the big thing that's happened between episode 30 and 40, if I recall correctly, is that this place will have taken a bit more shape down here. And oh, yep, there she is. I have completed the goose. Oh, you are a thing of beauty. I am so proud of this build. Which would be why it's the kind of background image for most of my channel stuff. And we've also got the buttercup. Because I've started drilling out and building the proper sections for the base. Igor's stealing the Tix parking spot at the moment. And the butterball is sitting here ready because it's just drilled out. This would have been the section for the welding machines, I think. Cool. Let's continue on to episode 50. Ah, uh, episode 50. Apparently, I still had this little forward base. The outpost. That was meant to be the proper defense against any assault by drones from this direction so that they couldn't get down and damage the solar tower because back here back this time back then back then we still had the base across the ice lake that was sending in drones however the drones were only coming in at about 15 meters a second because they were bugged at that stage so i'm not quite sure why i did so poorly with this thing i i genuinely don't know Something about it just never worked, and I ended up putting sandbags out there. Oh, here we go. Taking fire, taking fire, taking fire. Oh. Well. <laughs> it definitely wouldn't have worked if the speed of the drones was as they currently are. Oh, that's cool. I'm so glad that happened. Now that. Oh. Yep. We got... Take. We took a few bullets. <laughs> So this thing just kept taking damage and I had to keep repairing it and it ended up being that I really had to come up with a different design and a different idea. And this is the mountain that eventually becomes the silo. I think I spent a lot of time working on that and didn't do a whole lot else other than drilling out this hangar in the intervening episodes. So we've got the tick in its spot, we've got the welders in their spot all nice and detailed. Oh yeah, we've got... We've got an early rendition of the chicken hawk parked there. There's ugly ducklings on that spot. Yep, yep, yep. This all works. And I think... Eh. I think this might even be... Yes! Oh, we've got the turntable. It's actually in already. I didn't realise I'd had it done all by this point. Wow. And got the drill guide in. So I must have just drilled this out at that stage. All right, on to episode 60. All right, episode 60, we've got one of our turrets out there to protect us from the drones coming from the other direction. Since with the speed increase, they actually made it here by this point. Uh, I can hear stuff that's been damaged, so. Oh, I've got the little radar tower. Cool, so that's already finished by this point. What's inside here? Oh, I think that's because of the change in component volumes. This all looks very familiar and unchanged. Welded up a little bit of the walls in here, but nothing much else. What's going on down in the hangar? Blast doors are in. Ah, this is the big thing that happened. The grinder pit. That never really worked like I wanted it to. <laughs> I tried going so ultra complicated to try and prevent little bits like this getting stuck. Because if you have these pointing upwards, they get stuck in between all of the grinders. But I probably should have just accepted that and had a drop pit for it. But 
It was fun trying to get all this done. I'm going to enable creative mode because I don't want to run out of fuel. We've got the bin chicken. We've got more sandbags being projected, ready to be welded. And the goose is parked in its first spot. Imagine way out there, there is a mine. I wonder if it's already got the lights. It doesn't look like it. Wow. This game is running so much better than the current version. <laughs> this is so smooth. I'm so not used to flying around the base and having everything just run. I do have the sandbags here, but it doesn't look like I've yet put the lights out. Oh, episode 70, Ride of the Valkyries. As I use the chicken hawk to carry a whole bunch of sandbags in to assault the enemy base, while also having, what, bin chicken to carry a chicken hawk and a bunch of sandbags. To assault the enemy position, which is... Oh no, that's just wreckage over there. Oh man, this was such a fun attack. Dropping these things in, having them deploy their <laughs> parachutes, flip upside down and start shooting the enemy base. Let's do it again. Come on, this is going to be fun. Alrighty, so it's drop and then quickly switch to the chicken hawk. In fact, let's give ourselves some more altitude so I've got more time. Because <laughs> I know I'm not going to do this as quickly as I did the first time. Okay, here we go. Uh, shift K. Control. Nine. Three. Let's go. Chasing, 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 chasing. I think I've missed. <laughs> I think I've badly missed. Wait, did I need to set them to auto-deploy? Oh! Oh! I think I did! Their parachutes did not deploy! <laughs> I forgot some of the settings. Whoa! Oh yeah! Look at that maneuver! Whoa! Missile! <laughs> Oh wait, the turrets worked. <laughs> That's so cool. Even though their parachutes didn't deploy properly, they still worked. Oh, that's amazing. Ah, that sounds like a turret from inside. There we go. Cool, so that was episode 70. Let's move on to episode 80. Oh, here we go. We're in the tram tunnels. So I've started drilling the tram out. My most pointless creation ever, because I never actually used the rotten thing much. Uh, still fun to do. So I guess it didn't have a point. It had a point that it was fun. Uh, what have we done in the base in the last 20 episodes? Because I didn't look at it in the version from episode 70. So obviously I've dug out these stairs. And built them because I wanted the tram station. The excessively large stairs. How does the hangar look? thing is looking pretty much the same except we've got our welder wall in for quick printing of sandbags oh and of course we've got our toilet trailer <laughs> or our, our pelican trailer because I wanted to try and salvage the enemy base properly that I took on 10 episodes before this okay uh dear I do anything upstairs in the meantime? I don't think I have. Unless I've already got the upside down. I should have the upside down med bay by this point. So I think someone said I'd had it for about 45 episodes. So happy that all the versions were keep coming through. Have the music working on the elevator. All right, the server room in here is looking mostly like it is now. And yeah, I've done a bit more work on here, done some of the detailing around the sides, but I, oh yeah, upside down medbay, but I left this end off because I wanted to expand it further as I eventually did. Cool. And we've still got the big rock wall to our left. So I don't think that changes till about episode 100, to be honest. Let's find out. On to episode 90. Oh boy, look at what I loaded into for episode 90. That is very close to my face. So this was when I got a little bit distracted by messing with physics, made a ballista that almost destroyed me, 
as well as various other things and eventually build the trebuchet which isn't here yet and I think takes a couple one or more two more episodes before I build it uh, so I don't think I got anything all that special done down in the base in the meantime between the last time I looked at it and now I've obviously welded up a, welded up a lot of the outside of this thing and I think if I make it daytime yeah, I've got both of those turrets out there, the outrigger ones that do most of the defense. And still have not drilled out there. And the hangar downstairs is going to look almost identical to what it currently does since it hasn't changed much for quite some time. On to episode 100. Here we are, episode 100, the drone swarm. You know what, I'm not going to disconnect the catapult trailer I'm just going to drive in because I think these are still linked to me yes they are awesome so we get to relive this moment too I was always I always tried to be quite careful of making sure I had a backup save whenever I was about to do something cool attack wise like this because it just it's so nice to be able to go back and relive these moments like the Ride of the Valkyries moment from episode 70. It's just, it's just too much fun. Especially now that there's nothing on the line. Oh, incoming drifting pursuant. It is not gonna last long. Nope, it's done for. Oh, I lost one drone. Still got most of the swarm though. Blammo. Oh, in another drifting pursuant. Oh, did it just collide with one of my drones? Oh man, what's the physics? Yep, sim speed 0.7. I thought I was driving through molasses. All right, almost in range. Here we go. All right, this is going after my drones. Oh, oh man, this was such a great, <laughs> this is such a fun way to do this battle. The army of drones helping me. Oh, another drone down. It was kind of cool having the uh, pumpkins launched into the, into the place at the same time. But still, this was pretty fun. This is like driving through treacle. Well, I think the fact that I'd managed to do a lot better the first time suggests that maybe the catapult did something useful. <laughs> cool. Well, that's enough of the recap. I think it is time. It is finally time for us to launch our rocket into space and on to new adventures. <sighs> this view, this view will always make me think of Survival Maybe. This is always going to make me think of this save, of this series. It's watching the sun rise over that mountain and slowly brighten up the valley the blue mist in the distance this is the solar panels this is this has been home this has been a huge part of my channel a huge part of my last two years making these videos and building everything and coming up with different stuff to do crazy weird stuff sometimes something sometimes stuff that works sometimes stuff that very much didn't but i have had so much fun with this it is sad to see it go but i think it is time so let's head off over to the silo okay main engine ignition switching to proper camera view launching in three, two, one. Unlocked launch. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is not easy to steer, but we are clear. Oh, 
Oh, this is terrible to steer. This is hopeless to steer. Oh my jeez. It's so top heavy. <laughs> it just keeps wanting to tilt off axis. Ah! This is this is incredibly bad. Oh man. Every time I push, every time I do anything, it just twists. No. Oh, I am so glad I've got tons and tons and tons of fuel because this is not going to reach <laughs> without a lot of pushing. Oh boy. Alright. Uh, about six kilometers up. Got more than enough fuel to do this. That is good because. Wow, this thing is horrible to control. I'm constantly fighting this thing. <laughs> I'm picking up my mouse and moving it every couple of seconds because I'm having to push so hard. I can't get cool shots because all, all I have to do. Oh, I'm constantly fighting. Stop fighting me. You rotten thing. <laughs> well, this is officially the highest I've been, I think. I didn't go this high to take the photos for the map. Come on. Come on. Alright, when we get down to about... I reckon when we get down to like 0.1G, that's when I'll ditch the booster segment. Because oh, controlling this is a, all sorts of horrible. I think it's the subgrid clanging that's not helping. I think I'm generating uh, phantom forces from the rotor. If I disconnect it, I might get that back. But I don't really want to right now. Because I don't want to stop controlling the rocket <laughs> mid-flight and have everything go horribly wrong because of it doing that. 15k is up and 40% of our fuel used. It's not too bad. Oh, we lost camera linkage with the base, unfortunately. I'm going to need to get into... Oh, no, I have to do it remotely. Terminal. Antenna. Both of you. Max range. I've very much lost so much control. Uh, let's just, while I'm tumbling, uh, terminal, rotor, uh, detach. Aha! <laughs> it was that! <laughs> I have full control again! Yay! Oh man. Make sure if you decide to build a rocket like this that you do not <laughs> leave your rotor attached. Because now that that's not a clanging subgrid, I'm flying with ease. <laughs> oh, why couldn't I have realized that earlier? Oh, look at that. We are heading to space. Ah. <sighs> What a way to say goodbye to the valley with all sorts of dirt. Oh man. 20 kilometers up. I don't really care about burning too much fuel because I'm going to have more than enough. Because we are at 0.17 Gs. And I think the thrusters that I've got on that little capsule should be enough to control it at 0.1 I'm going to guess. I suppose I'll find out of parachutes on it so if it goes wrong i'm up i'm in all sorts of trouble <sighs> oh man space engineers and i finally at episode 112 the finale get to space yeah yeah that's the way it should be played maybe i guess well my antenna linkage back down to base doesn't seem to be working reginald keeps losing his perspective so i'm not sure what to do about that uh um, I'm going to need to reduce the power on those antennas because they're going to burn so much energy. Alright, I think it is time to say goodbye. Capture remote control. Control. Alright, here we go. Uh, it'll be number three. And number four. Detach. Ion thrust is on. Leaving booster stage behind. Forgot to turn on the <laughs> parachute auto deploy. We'll have to get Reginald to sort that part out. We have thrust. We are leaving gravity. 
This is kind of a pretty cool view with the uh, ion thrusters burning. And we've left gravity. I am in space. All right, time to grab Reggie and see what he sees as that goes back down. Auto deploy on. Just realized I reduced the antenna range on it. Oh, I wonder if it's going to... Oh, see ya. Okay, the booster stage is not going back down. <laughs> the booster stage is going to space. Uh, see ya. Bye. <laughs> oh man. Ah, uh, what a way to finish. The booster doesn't even make it back down. Well, after almost two years, I am here. I am in space in an airtight, small grid capsule. That doesn't look too horrible. I probably should have painted it, but oh well. The things you forget to do and then realize and then... Normally when I do these things, I do them over two episodes. So, you know, that's what happens. <sighs> Normally I would end an episode by saying, so there's that and plenty more to come. But in this case, I think it would be more apt to say, so there's that and there's something new to come. And I hope I will see you then.